we are about to enter kvk once again and as you can see pre kvk is already on stage three so we'll be in the lost kingdom very soon so in this video i'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of the five armies that i'm gonna be using in kvk and we're gonna go over all of the equipment the armaments the talent trees and everything like that so that way you guys have an idea as to what i'm actually investing in in rise of kingdoms and you can see my progression of my account from now since the last episode of the series and so on but first what's going on guys cheers okay now the first pair we're gonna go over is my gorgo primary with liu che secondary now, if you guys watch my most recent video you'll know that gorgo is the most recent commander that i have invested in here in rise of kingdoms and we're currently using her at 5515 if you wanted to see how i got this configuration you definitely should check out the previous video it was actually insane now all the equipment and armaments that i'm going to be using on my gorgo as the primary commander are currently on my liu che because he is a primary in my sunset canyon lineup but if we take a look at the equipment here this is the four piece infantry set that I have built you can see that the shield is actually tier two so I'm ignoring two percent of enemy health over here which is really nice and you can see that the boots of the eternal empire are up to tier three already and I have enough materials I just need the blueprint for tier four which is going to get me the five percent March speed which is going to be really important because obviously as you guys know Gorgo with Liu Che is a little bit limited as far as March speed goes which is why I decided to put the four piece set bonus on this pairing then of course for accessories we have the dagger with the iconic tier one and we are currently using a silent trial with the special talent now this is going to be switched out for a ring of doom I'm going to be getting a ring of doom blueprint once we enter into the kvk map because as you can see I've got enough season coins here to just buy it right off rip I'm debating if I'm going to put the ring on the gorgo Liu Che or if I'm going to put it somewhere else and we'll talk about that maybe in a little bit but this is sort of my second set of infantry equipment it is much faster because of the four piece set bonus but it has slightly less stats than my other set which we'll talk about in just a moment and then when we come in here to armaments you can see that I've actually changed to the arch formation now if you guys have been paying attention to my channel you do know that I was using the wedge formation on my Liu Che for last KVK and of course the wedge formation literally doesn't do anything for Liu Che because he's not dealing any skill damage but I had much better armaments for that formation and so even though the actual formation bonus itself wasn't doing anything the stats and the inscriptions were so much better that I was using that regardless but here I have slightly better arch armaments than I did in the past it's really nothing special but it is in a place where I feel like I can use it in the open field for PvP so we have 8.2 percent infantry attack we have five percent defense 4.4 percent health and we have 1.4 percent all damage which is nice but it bellicose as a inscription is really cool here because it says whenever you launch any type of basic attack it has a 10 percent chance to gain five percent bonus damage dealt for three seconds that's a really nice buff here from an inscription and also as far as i know this likely will be triggered from the expertise on liu che because it says any type of basic attack so that includes from my understanding an additional basic attack as well so i feel like this is just like a match made in heaven for liu che which is great and then we have 2.5 percent extra health here on the inscription so that brings us up to 6.9 percent infantry health nice also 69 percent you guys are not subscribed to the channel so make sure you go ahead and click that button down there a lot of you guys probably think you are, but you're not the next inscription here you have one percent more normal damage perfect smite two percent more normal damage so in total we have three percent more normal damage plus the five percent here so eight percent more normal damage that's going to be beautiful for gorgo with liu che now if you guys didn't see my most recent video then this is the talent build that i'm going to be using for my gorgo in the open field you can see that we grab testudo formation because this has a higher probability of triggering with the extra basic attacks from liu che's expertise so having this more often is going to be really really nice also we grab a loose formation to take nine percent less skill damage which is super good we grab hold the line here as well we get six percent of health on strong body we also grab all the march speed that we can over here which is really good we had four points left over so i put them in these stats over here didn't really know what else to do with them really nowhere else to put them here i didn't have enough to grab medicinal supplies so it is what it is moving on to my second army here this is none other than guan Scipio. yes this is i mean we'll see what the next infantry release is i know we're quite far away from the next infantry cycle but the next infantry cycle could bump guan Yu out of my lineup so this might be the last kvk 
that I'm running Guan Yu. We'll have to see what the future holds, but this pairing is tried and true. It is still incredible in the open field, and it's just so shocking how long Guan Yu has been, you know, usable and viable in the open field. It's just, it's disgusting. The 2000 damage factor and the silence is just so good, man. Taking a look at my other infantry set here, you could see that I am rocking a two piece set bonus. We have plus 3% troop defense here. I kind of regret this helmet because I'm probably going to be getting a KVK helmet at some point, but we'll have to wait and see. I guess that wouldn't really move the needle that much at this point because I get you know with the set bonus 14 percent defense so maybe it's not really worth it unless I get the talent on there but anyway you can see we have the talent on the hope cloak and on the eternal knight down here which is really beautiful we have iconic tier two for a lot of the stuff here actually we have it on the hammer of sun and moon so we're ignoring two and a half percent enemy health which is beautiful there we also have ignoring one and a half percent enemy attack and ignoring another one and a half percent enemy health over here so really just completely ignoring health on the this uh on this build you can see we have the iconic tier four shio's return which gets me the five percent march speed now i do have a extra blueprint for shio's return and i do have enough materials to get it to iconic five but I, it's so expensive i mean the amount of materials it's like 40 legendary materials just to get five percent march speed outside of alliance territory i will do it eventually but i just feel like 40 legendary materials it's really expensive there's other things that I really have to do first before I complete that but it will be nice especially on inventory of course we have the horn and the ring that is the tried and true combination for accessories coming down here to the formation of course we have wedge formation five percent more skill damage and then for the stats we have 8.6 percent attack 8.6 percent defense and 4.6 percent health no all damage here which is unfortunate but we have four inscriptions ward says whenever you use an active skill you take five percent less damage for three seconds and we deal two and a half percent more skill damage with devious which is nice there's a lot of skill damage coming out of this pairing we also take two and a half percent less skill damage of all types and we deal three percent more counter attack damage of all types as well so again not the best uh stats here in the world I wish there was more health I wish there was more all damage but I've actually been going back and forth between these two armaments I'm not really sure which one I think is better obviously there's just more stats on this one with ward uh, but this one has slightly more health at a pretty big defense cost but also I get hunter here which is like seven percent more skill damage so it's like oh man I feel like that's the play I feel like that's the play it just looks so much worse from a from a stats perspective like, like if we're just looking at that it just looks so much worse man I'm not really sure you guys can let me know in the comment section below which one of these which inscription do you, do you think I should go for the ward or for the hunter I'd like to I'd like to know you know what I'm gonna switch to the one with hunter that's that's how I'm feeling at this moment who knows maybe I'll switch it back later as far as talent builds go this is what we're currently rocking for open fields currently I have this set for my Canyon lineup but this is what I'm gonna be using in the open field obviously we grab feral nature and then we grab all the March speed that we can over here we have a couple of points left over so we grab the one percent health and then the last two points I just put in the defense here uh, there's really nowhere else that I could put it moving on to the third pair here this is none other than Zhuge Liang primary with Herman prime secondary of course this is my one and only Archer March and I do think that this thing is absolutely stacked now if we take a look here at the equipment you'll notice that i am running some purple pieces and the reason that i'm only running one archer march is because it's just the troop type that i've cared the least about so yes eventually i will replace these with legendary pieces but because i did get so lucky with the talent on the chest and the gloves i'm feeling pretty good about this set now of course it is a four piece set bonus so i do have the three percent extra skill damage here which is really really nice the revival greaves and helmet both give you a ton of defense and i get three percent troop attack from the set bonus which is cool we also have of course the ring and horn over here and everything that I have iconic is just iconic one iconic tiers are important but again archers are kind of like my, my last priority here even though again this army is absolutely stacked I really think the Herman Prime is just going to be a must-have in the open field whether or not you have to expertise him is still up for debate I don't think so I think a 5551 is probably good but I've never I haven't done the testing so I can't say for sure but I mean the AoE on this dude with Zhuge Liang is just unbelievable okay taking a look at the armaments here you could see that we've got a ton of archer stats we have eight percent health 12 and a half percent defense 1.6 percent health and 3.4 percent all damage combo here says whenever you use an active skill you gain eight percent bonus to all types of skill damage dealt for three seconds so that means my herman prime eight percent more skill damage that's crazy respite 
is this respite or respite i don't know it says whenever this wielder's troop is hit with a basic attack it has a 10 percent chance to take 10 percent less damage for two seconds amazing buff here and this is the wielder's troop deals two percent more damage on the map so another two percent all damage basically which is just wild so i feel like i got really lucky with my archer armaments here i used five transmutation stones on this one and then the rest of these i didn't transmute at all so i literally just got lucky with just raw armaments which is amazing and then coming down here to the talent build this is pretty much the only talent build that i would consider for julia leong of course we grab feral nature then we grab razor sharp for the extra rage which is nice we always grab Ven venomous sting eight percent more skill damage is beautiful and then you just have a bunch of points left over and you have no choice but to pretty much grab this uh the other part of the archer tree here i don't love these talents very much a lot of it is you know nine percent archer attack under 50 percent. we have archer attack we have archer attack and then we have normal damage really nothing wild here but of course you love the rage engine in the skill tree moving on to army number four we have huo with william now this is a tried and true pair and of course if we are going to see a really powerful open field cavalry commander coming soon my prediction is in early may first week of may perhaps then william will probably get the boot so again this also might be the last kvk that i run my william it's too early to say but it's totally possible of course this is my second uh, cavalry set this is my worst of the two of course as you can see here we're still rocking the purple weapon we still have a silent trial so a purple accessory and then really not that much in the in the way of iconic upgrades either of course we have an iconic upgrade for Moore's web and of course for the boots because you get health from both of these but otherwise i still have only the two piece set bonus not the three piece set bonus yet here for uh cavalry and the reason that i put more as web on my huo is because i just wanted to put this on a one of my cavalry armies because cavalry is you know the fast and true type and so therefore the probability that i could inflict the slowdown is higher because i'll actually be able to keep up whereas if i put this more as web on an infantry pair it might be the case that they just don't stay connected and they can't get that debuff so this could potentially be better on my um, gorgo with liu che really just liu che in general but for now i'm gonna leave it on a cavalry army because i have it and why why not really heart of the saint is still so good i mean i don't care what anyone says i'm still gonna rock that for a while taking a look at the armaments here we can see we have 6.4 percent cav attack 3.8 percent defense 6.2 percent health which is beautiful and 3.6 percent all damage which we love calm says whenever you deal direct damage you have a 30 percent chance to gain 10 percent attack for three seconds amazing pulverize says when you launch a basic attack you have a 10 percent chance to gain 20 percent bonus to all types of normal damage dealt for one second okay i mean 20 percent's a lot but it's only for one basic attack so it is what it is and this says whenever the wheelless troop takes any type of skill damage you have a 10 percent chance to reduce it by 20 percent. that's really good it is a five second cooldown but still like that is almost like a skill like that's just, that's just really good for for an inscription i don't know and then as far as talent builds go this is what i'm rocking on my huo we grab feral nature of course then we grab in blaze and shield so you take 12 percent less skill damage then we come up here we grab undying fury for nine extra rage for every basic attack then we had three points left over and I just threw it into Halberd because you're going to see a lot of archers in the open field these days. And it is very important to deal as much damage to them as possible, especially Juge Leong with Herman prime. And then my fifth and final March here is Nevsky with Joan. And I don't foresee this changing at all, unless the next cavalry release has something insane where you have to move one of these guys around. But like, this is basically the Guan CPO of cavalry. Like when I look at my reports from Guan CPO and I look at my reports from Nevsky Joan, they're very comparable, at least for me. The Nevsky Joan might perform slightly better, but man, it is, it's, it's so good. Taking a look at the gear on the Nevsky, you can see this is my main cavalry gear. Everything here has an iconic crystal except for the weapon. I did get lucky with the talent here on the helm of the hellish wasteland, which is really nice. And I was able to get the iconic two upgrade for the Ash of the Dawn. We have 2% extra cavalry health because of that, which is really beautiful. And of course I can continue to upgrade this as well, but I I, I, again i'm just saving my materials for some other things that i think take priority such as the fourth upgrade for my set infantry boots also i will have to do some iconic upgrades for the archer boots as well unfortunately as i showed you guys before uh, the juge leong herman is still kind of slow and so i do want to make some nice progress here on the dragon's breath boots eventually i think you know those types of things are what's going to take more priority over you know some of these other upgrades that don't really
really move the needle that much of course we do have the ring and horn over here on the nevsky this is i mean you want the rage you want the damage that is like literally what this pairing is all about it is i mean it's been meta for so long i think everybody knows this the armaments here are looking pretty good as well we have 7.8 percent attack for cavalry 7.5 percent defense and 2.8 percent health we have another 2.3 percent march speed and 0.6 percent all damage i wish we had more all damage on this set you know we have it on the huo unfortunately not on this one we have well clad another three and a half percent defense here so we're looking at 11 percent cav defense war hunger says you deal 1.5 percent more normal damage and vitality gives me three and a half percent health so in total 6.3 percent cavalry health as well so a really nice distribution of stats here and of course a lot of the health on this pairing is going to come from the equipment as well right we have cav health here 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 we have cav health from the skills here on nevsky and we also have a little bit of health on the joan of arc as well so lots of cav health so i'm okay with having a little bit less of it on the uh armaments as well even though honestly 6.3 percent is still pretty good so since last kvk we had a couple of small upgrades in like the iconics department for some of these different um, pieces i think i don't remember if i had the talented eternal knight last kvk that might be new i'm not really sure but there's just been one or two small armament upgrades across the entire lineup gorgo is probably the newest thing in the lineup of course and the armaments that go along with her that is probably the biggest change between this kvk and last kvk and then like i said earlier next steps for the account are going to be the tier 4 iconic for the boots here eventually we're going to do the um crafting of the next ring of doom eventually we'll do the shears return for another five percent march speed there for the last iconic upgrade and then we'll probably start to work more on the um archer boots uh, that's going to be a really important iconic upgrade for me because again there's no march speed on Zhuge Liang, so the faster i can make him the better and those are like the big upgrades coming soon after that it's just going to be small incremental gains for these uh, iconic upgrades pretty much now as far as the kvk itself we did register for heroic anthem and from what i can tell it looks like it's going to be the wind camp which is where we are it's going to be wind and water versus earth and fire so it should be a really interesting kvk it'll be the top half of the map versus the bottom half of the map and heroic anthem is tried and true we always have a lot of fun in this kvk game mode so i'm looking forward to it i feel like it should be uh it should definitely be a good fight for the first pass opening and all the way into kingsland really but guys that's gonna do it for this video make sure if you made it all the way to the end of the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so the rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on everything in this video what do you think about the commander lineups the armaments inscriptions equipment everything i would love to know your thoughts and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace